This is a McLaren MP412C. Today we are going to talk about its engine, the M838T. This is a 3.8 liter 90 degree flat plane V8. It's twin turbocharged by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, and these fixed geometry turbos have a wide compressor map to match the engine's speed range. The block itself is sand cast aluminum alloy with wet cylinder liners designed in aluminum and finished with a low friction nicosil coating. The heads have four valves per cylinder with a phaser on each of the camshafts. It is water cooled and port injected and variable valve lift is achieved with conventional valve train solid tappets. Dry sump lubrication allows the engine to sit low in the chassis for a low center of gravity. Altogether, the block weighs 36 kilograms and is just 201 millimeters tall. This engine delivers 616 bhp at 7,000 rpm, but the amazing part is that 80% of its torque is available below 2,000 rpm. With all of that, it also boasted the highest horsepower to CO2 emission ratio of any production engine of its time. And it won awards. It won the 3 to 4 liter category of the International Engine of the Year Award for 2013, 2014, and 2015. While the M838 was developed specifically for the MP412C, it was not McLaren's doing alone. The original design idea for the M838 was based on Nissan's VRH35 from 1998 in Le Mans, to which McLaren bought the rights. Then McLaren drastically changed everything so that the Nissan motor is no longer really visible. Additionally, McLaren partnered with Ricardo PLC, a British firm that provides engineering and strategic consulting. 80 people from Ricardo worked on the core team for the 18 month project. That's 18 months from when Ricardo received the first design specifications from McLaren to when the factory was up and running and producing engines. In that same 18 months, Ricardo also designed and built the actual factory to produce the engine in West Sussex. While the team did consider a V6 engine briefly, they decided against it because it would have required even higher boost pressures than what the V8 ultimately did. During the design and production, Ricardo and McLaren engaged in a lot of testing. They used databases and simulators to refine injector spray patterns and port shapes. They reduced the risk of leaks in the crankcase by using picture frame sealing instead of T-joints. To test this design, the team put the engine through multiple rounds of extreme temperature tests, and I mean extreme, ramping it up to 115 degrees Celsius and then dropping it down to 20 degrees Celsius quickly with chilled coolant. They mitigated engine knock at full load by using ignition and valve timing plus enrichment. Ricardo also minimized the higher vibrations of the flat plane design by ensuring stiffly mounted key points. Overall, the engine underwent 5,000 hours of testing on seven dynos. Then it went through 3,000 hours of Nürburgring simulation to gain 73,000 kilometers of track driving. And of course, it logged a bunch of time on actual tracks and roads and prototypes. Altogether, that is more than a million kilometers of testing when it's all added up. During that time, the team also worked on acoustics, minimizing the rattles and clicks and emphasizing the exhaust and intake notes. Ricardo also built a handmade prototype exhaust, the concept of which was eventually used in the actual production. Finally, the team added sound amplifiers to the intake manifold and piped the audio right into the cabin of the car. In the end, all of that work paid off to create a high performance engine that will flatten the driver into the seat with just a tap of the gas pedal.